Hello there. In this video, let's understand regarding hypothyroidism, how this question can be asked. It can be a part of a long essay, like something like this, explain the synthesis of the thyroid hormones and describe any five actions of the thyroid hormones and add a note on hyperthyroidism. Or we can also give you the symptoms, the features of hyperthyroidism, like a 50-year-old lady presents with swelling in the front of her neck, which is goiter, protrusion of the eyeballs, which is exophthalmos. She's also complaining of tremors of the hand and on examination, the heart rate is 115 per minute which is tachycardia and all these symptoms they will tell us that most probably the diagnosis is hyperthyroidism explain the actions of the hormones involved and this question the pathophysiological basis of signs and symptoms in the EBO case or it can be just a short note hyperthyroidism so what is it that you are going to write in your exam so that you are going to garner maximum marks so first let's begin with what is hyperthyroidism? Hyperthyroidism is nothing but its overactivity of the thyroid gland because of which there is excessive secretion of these two hormones that is T3 and T4. At this level, at the level of the first year MBBS, I want you to write at least two causes for hyperthyroidism. One is called as Graves' disease. Now, Graves' disease is an autoimmune disease. That means there is production of autoimmune antibodies. And what type of antibodies are these? This is important. These are thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulins or thyroid-stimulating antibodies. So, like this is the follicular cell. And the follicular cell has got the receptor for thyroid-stimulating hormone. So, the thyroid-stimulating hormone acts on this receptors and that leads to the synthesis and secretion of T3 and T4. Now, here these thyroid-stimulating antibodies, they are going to act on the same receptors as the TSH and that causes continuous stimulation of the thyroid gland because of which there is an excessive secretion of T3 and T4 and which leads to hyperthyroidism. The second cause is what is called as the thyroid adenoma. It's a benign tumor of the thyroid gland. If you want to add, you can add two more causes. The third is what is called as a toxic nodular goiter, which is also called as plumber's disease. Here we can see there are multiple nodules within the thyroid gland. These are called as, this is what is called as a toxic nodular goiter. The next one more reason is what is called as jod besido phenomenon. This occurs here. The hyperactivity of the thyroid gland is occurring because of excessive consumption of the iodine. So, these are the four causes of hyperthyroidism. Next, let's dive into the clinical features. The first three clinical features, that is the weight loss, intolerance to heat and excessive sweating. All these three are occurring because of increase in the basal metabolic rate, which occurs because of excessive secretion of the T3 and T4, which is also called as calorigenic action of the thyroid hormones. And in this, the weight loss can be also attributed to the actions of T3 and T4 on the fat metabolism, wherein T3 and T4 are causing lipolysis. Okay, this is how we can explain these three symptoms, the weight loss, the intolerance to heat because there is excessive heat production because of increase in the BMR. So the patient will be intolerant to heat and that is also causing excessive sweating. The loss of muscle, very easy. This is attributed to the actions of T3 and T4 on the protein metabolism, wherein T3 and T4 is causing what is called as proteolysis, that is excessive breakdown of the protein, which leads to the loss of the muscle. Next sign or the symptom we come across is goiter. We already know what it is. It's an abnormal enlargement of the thyroid gland and the patient presents with an enlargement in the anterior aspect of the neck and remember that the goiter need not be only because of hyperthyroidism goiter can also occur in hypothyroidism so if i am seeing goiter that need not be only because of hyper it could be also because of hypo the next two symptoms are pertaining to the cardiovascular system wherein as we have also seen in the case which I discussed above, there is going to be tachycardia and there is going to be this rhythm abnormality which is called as atrial fibrillation. Now, why does this occur and what you are supposed to write in your exams if they are asking you to explain the pathophysiological basis of the signs and symptoms is that these are going to basically occur because of the increase in the number as well as sensitivity, increase in the number as well as sensitivity of these receptors which are called as beta adrenergic receptors. These are called as beta adrenergic receptor so increase in the number and increase in the sensitivity this is the one which is leading to tachycardia and atrial fibrillation remember that atrial fibrillation is the most common rhythm abnormality which can occur in hyperthyroidism these four symptoms or the clinical features nervousness irritability restlessness and psychosis is due to overstimulation of the central nervous system okay t3 and t4 they overstimulate the central nervous system 
fine tremors of the hand and exaggerated deep tendon reflexes. This occurs because of increase in the reactivity. The word used is reactivity of what? Of the neuronal synapses. Okay, increase in the reactivity of the neuronal synapses. Where these neuronal synapses are present, they are present in the spinal cord and these are the one which control the muscle tone. So excessive T3 and T4 increases the reactivity of the neuronal synapses which are present in the spinal cord which control the muscle tone. That is why we are going to get fine tremors of the hand and we also get exaggerated deep tendon reflexes like the knee jerk and the ankle jerk. The next two symptoms are attributed to the actions of T3 and T4 on the GIT. Okay, so T, because there is increase in the BMR, increase in the heat production, of course, there is an increase in the appetite. And we also know that T3 and T4, they also cause increase in the motility of the GIT. They also cause increased secretion of the digestive juices in the GIT. So this could be the reason be because of which the person will present with diarrhea and as well as with increase in the appetite. Next is a very important feature we come across in hyperthyroidism which is called as exophthalmus. This is nothing but protrusion of the eyeball. There are two reasons for this. One is there is edema. Where is the edema? Edema is there in the retroorbital spaces that is behind the eyeball because of which the eyeball is protruded to the to, towards the front and there is also degenerative changes which occur in the extraocular muscles. So these are the two reasons why we get exophthalmus and there are two signs here which we see which is called as lid lag and lid retraction. Okay lid lag and lid retraction. The lid lag is the one uh, which is occurring in the upper eyelid wherein the lid upper eyelid is not closing completely whenever the person is looking down. So because of that maximum amount of the sclera which is present in the upper part is exposed. That's why we see that there is protrusion of the eyeball and even the upper eyelid is not uh, retracted. It's completely retracted back. So these two all are also the reasons behind exophthalmus. One is called as the lid lag. Another one is called as the lid retraction. And now coming to the reproductive system, where an excessive amount of T3 and T4 can lead to impotence in the males. It causes oligomenorrhea in the females and amenorrhea also in the females. So these things can lead to infertility because we know that T3 and T4 is extremely essential for the normal functioning of the reproductive system. So it is in excess, then we are going to get these features. So this is what we are supposed to explain if they ask us the pathophysiological basis of the signs and symptoms in hyperthyroidism. So this is a diagram which is showing us the exophthalmus here and we can also see the enlargement of the thyroid gland which is nothing but goiter. Now if it's a short note and if they just ask you hyperthyroidism, we can complete the answer by writing the diagnosis. Now how are we going to diagnose this condition? Free T3 and T4 of course are elevated. Now whenever there is elevation of T3 and T4 because of the negative feedback mechanism, the TSH is low. Radio iodine uptake is increased in the thyroid gland. We can also detect autoimmune antibodies. This is pertaining to our Graves disease, okay, wherein we detect the thyroid stimulating antibodies and we can come to a conclusion that the person is having Graves disease. And when we take the ECG in these people, they always show tachycardia and some rhythm abnormalities. The most common rhythm abnormality is atrial fibrillation. And these people can also present with an enlarged thyroid gland, which is nothing but the whiter. Thanks for listening.